the arguments that have been arrayed um, on the side of those who believe that the lunar landings were a hoax are very elaborate, and they have to be to support um, a, a theory like this. In the end, there's, there's one set of evidence that is irrefutable, and that is that there are footprints, boot prints, still on the lunar surface. But conspiracy theorists say that the footprints themselves are suspicious. The surface appears to be very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. To have a powerful rocket engine blast the surface of the moon, blasting away all of the dust, and then find footprints surrounding the lunar lander, that to me would be an impossibility. Photo after photo reveals that the lunar surface surrounding the LEM is covered with footprints. But Casing says there's something even more difficult to explain. The fact that there's no blast crater under the LEM is one of the most conclusive pieces of evidence that I find supporting the hoax. In fact, no sign of a blast crater is visible for any of the six lunar landings. But LEM specialist Paul Fiel says he can explain why the lunar module left no crater when landing on the moon. The amount of thrust that you need coming out of the bottom of the descent engine is about 1,500, 2,000 pounds of thrust. And all that does is just push dust away. There's no burning or anything like that. Yet NASA's own scientific illustrations clearly depict a blast crater. Then there's one other point. If they had truly landed on the moon, this dust would have then descended on the lunar lander, on the foot pads, and we find not a trace of dust on the foot pads. When I discovered that alone, <laughs> I said, no way am I looking at a lunar lander that landed on the moon. Could it be that the LEM was just a prop on a giant lunar movie set? When Armstrong said, that's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind, the footprint that he made could have easily been made in Area 51. Casing points out that the LEM's departure from the lunar surface is even more suspicious. In the footage of the ascent stage going up, what you don't see is an exhaust plume coming out of the rocket engine nozzle. But what do we see? We see the ascent stage suddenly pop up without any exhaust plume whatsoever, as though it were jerked up by a cable. Is this evidence of a conspiracy? Was the government capable of such a massive cover-up? To propose that this was all faked and a hoax, they have to say that every piece of evidence, that, that every physical scientific test that one could offered to support the reality of the lunar landings, they have to say that all of those are fake. I would say that my conviction that Apollo was a fake was really not according to one specific piece of evidence, but it was cumulative. This whole thing was a fake. Coming up. We're getting a picture on the TV. If there's no air on the moon, why is this American flag waving? Plus, could these official NASA photos have been doctored? All of the photographs were fake. And later, is it possible for humans to have survived the deadly radiation in deep space? When Conspiracy Theory continues. If the moon landings were actually filmed on a movie set, then where's the evidence? According to David Percy, an award-winning filmmaker and photographer, the proof is in NASA's own lunar photos and video. Our research suggests that images of the Apollo landings are not a true and accurate record. In our view, the Apollo pictures were faked. Many of the images are replete with inconsistencies and anomalies. In fact, Percy claims that when examined, these images suggest that man never went to the moon at all. This famous scene of man taking his first steps on the lunar surface is one of the most recognizable in history. 
But why are such important images so grainy and hard to see? And we're getting a picture on the TV. You okay, got a good picture, huh? NASA claims it's the result of 1960s technology. If you go back and look at it, the Apollo 11 mission uh, was some, some pretty awful video by today's standards. They, these were ghostly images that just did not look very real at all. And that was a function of the transmitter at the time, the camera at the time that we had available to us to fly on Apollo 11. But investigative journalist Bart Sabrell believes that NASA intentionally made the images hard to see. NASA orchestrated the hoax in a very unique way through television. They had one picture which they completely controlled, black and white, grainy, that convinced everybody we were on the moon. We had no reason to doubt it. They had complete reins over the pictures, over the sound. I mean, sad to say, it was easier than people believe. But despite the lack of clarity, conspiracy theorists see evidence suggesting that these images were staged. Absolutely unreal. Although it appears that the astronauts are moving in the moon's gravity, which is one-sixth that of the Earth, Percy notes that when the speed of the film is doubled, the astronauts appear to be running as if in Earth's gravity. Also, when the footage of the lunar rover is doubled in speed, it looks as if it's driving here on Earth. But there's another reason some believe the Apollo missions were shot on Earth. If there is no air or wind on the moon, why is this American flag waving? The fact that the flag flaps on the moon where there's no atmosphere means that there must have been a little blast of wind out in Area 51 where they shot this. Could these questionable images simply be the result of astronauts struggling to plant the flag into the lunar surface? Or is there more going on than meets the eye? What about the still photography? Some say the design of the bulky spacesuits would have made it extremely difficult for the astronauts to operate their chest-mounted cameras. The man who designed these cameras is Jan Lundberg. Once on the moon, on the lunar surface, in the dress, in the life support system, you couldn't see the camera. They couldn't bend their head that far down. They had no viewfinder, they had to aim by moving their body. Click, click, click. If the cameras were so difficult to manipulate, how were thousands of photos taken with crystal clarity and precise framing? The pictures that we see that allegedly were taken on the moon are absolutely perfect. But with closer examination, Casing says flaws begin to emerge. Unfortunately, errors were made which are now being discovered. Conspiracy theorists point out that lighting is a major flaw in the lunar photos. Case in point. On the moon, the astronauts' only source of light was the sun. They had no extra lighting, uh, no flashes or things like that. Yet in this photograph from Apollo 14, the shadows are cast in different directions, suggesting multiple light sources. The shadows cast by the rocks in the foreground should have been east-west, like the Lem shadow. And in this photo from Apollo 17, Again, the shadows are pointing in different directions. Outside in sunlight, shadows always run parallel with one another. So the shadows will never intersect. Conspiracy theorists say it's not just the shadows that indicate the use of additional lights. But what has been photographed in the shadows? For example, here's an astronaut who descends into a huge shadow cast by the lunar module. Yet his entire body is still visible. How is it that he is not shrouded in darkness? Here's the same maneuver from another Apollo mission. Again, the astronaut is brightly lit in what is obviously dark shadow. And in this picture, the sun is directly behind the astronaut. His figure should be a silhouette. 
Yet even the smallest characteristics of his suit are recognizable. It seems like he's standing in the spotlight. And I can't explain that. Um, that, that escapes me. <laughs> Why? And finally, in this picture with the sun behind the lunar module, the front of the craft is clearly visible. The words United States are crisp and clear. How could these backlit pictures be so detailed? It's because there's more than one light source, which means they're not on the moon. But NASA simply dismisses these arguments. There are a number of claims uh, that the pictures taken by Apollo astronauts were faked. And there are so many, it would be an exercise in futility to go off and try to answer all of those. But the questions continue. Why do some of these images shot at different times and different places appear to have identical backgrounds? These two photos seem to have the same mountain backdrop, yet the lunar module is only present in one of them. Seemingly impossible, since the LEM never moved and its base remained even after the mission. Some suggest the same artificial backdrop was used when shooting two entirely separate pictures. Background discrepancies are also apparent in the lunar video. The best evidence are some pictorial anomalies in the photographic record of the trip to the moon. There is one uh, for Apollo 16 where the same shot, the same hill, appears in two different days. This tape was shot on what was reported to be the first of Apollo 16's lunar excursions. But it couldn't pick a better spot. And this video was from the next day at a different location. That is the most beautiful sight. NASA claims the second location was two and a half miles away. But when one video was superimposed over the other, the locations appear identical. The conspiracy theorists see that as evidence that we didn't go to the moon, that it was staged, and the opposite point of view is that it's a case of bad editing. It's absolutely unreal. Conspiracy theorists claim that even closer examination of the photos suggest evidence of doctoring. For reference, crosshairs were permanently etched into the lunar cameras, so they would have to appear on top of every image. But in this photo, a crosshair is behind a part of the lunar rover. This situation is impossible and has to be the result of technical manipulation and doctoring of the image. And in this photo from Apollo 11, the equipment in the foreground is covering the crosshair, not behind it. And in another from Apollo 12, the American flag is covering one crosshair and the astronaut is covering the other. When presented with these questionable photos and videos, NASA refutes the conspiracy theories. Some range from incredibly complicated to incredibly goofy. Uh, there are arguments that are um, wrong optically, they're wrong physically, they're wrong scientifically, they're wrong historically. There's uh, you know, a great deal of claptrap that is, is sort of woven in to these arguments. But despite what NASA says, conspiracy theorists still insist that Apollo was a hoax. When I looked at all the pictures and all the footage, I'm absolutely convinced, I bet my life on it, that we didn't go to the moon. I know for a fact that we didn't. Coming up next, tragedy strikes the Apollo program. The program could be stopped dead in this track. Three astronauts die in a pre-launch simulation. But was it an accident? He was going to blow the whistle on the whole project. And later, could the astronauts have survived a trip into deep space?